Brittany here from CRC Podcast, and we are here at the Urban World Film Festival. We are screening a whole bunch of great films from all your favorite actors and actresses. We give you behind the scenes info and tea, so stay tuned. Hi, we are here with Simone Missig. Um, that is so cool. Oh, yes, thank you. Yeah, and uh, mm, gotta, we gotta make it work. 2018. <laughs> yes. So can you tell us about your, um, your project that you're filming today? Uh, so premiering? The, the film that I'm here for is a movie called Jin by first-time filmmaker uh, Nigel Limbaman. She is a African-American Muslim woman from the Bay Area, and this is her first feature. It's somewhat autobiographical, but not really, about a young woman whose mother converts to Islam the senior year of high school for her and what that does to her world and her life. And I play her mother. I play the mother of a young woman named Zoe Renee, who's a phenomenal actress that people have seen on the quad. And in the film, I'm my ex-husband is my real-life husband, Dorian Missick, which is great. But the film has an amazing cast, Kelvin Harrison Jr., Kelly Jinrette, who was just nominated for the Emmy for Handmaid's Tale, Hisham Tafik from The Blacklist. And so it's just... This beautiful cast and beautiful people who came together to tell this story. That's beautiful. And what's the biggest message you hope people get from um, watching? Oh, you know, I think that the, the obvious message is that any religion, when it's practiced out of love, is nothing but God and it's beautiful. And the things that we as human beings put on religion that are divisive, that tear our country and our world apart are not what was intended by God when he shared that with us. Whether you are Muslim or Jewish or Christian like myself or Buddhist, it does not matter. It's all from love. And I think that that's the beautiful message that I want people to take away from the film. But also that little black girls have to be given the space to grow and to become who they are without our societal pressures of Instagram and all of that bull that put, gets put on little black girls especially right. that makes them feel like they can't become who they want to be and so I think that that's important. Awesome, that's beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great Thank talking you. to you too. Yes, we are here with Joe Martin. Um, so how are you, how are you doing? Might I say, is you styling? Everything is on point. <laughs> Big fan, by the way, of Scandal and everything. So. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so how important is a festival like Urban World to you? Urban World is, is important because we're dealing with young black writers and directors who have something to say, who have stories to tell. And those stories, uh, for the most part, are outside of what we usually see from Hollywood. And what we usually see from Hollywood usually has to do with something to do with civil rights or something to do with slavery or something to do with us being equal somehow. So. That's a story that should continue to be told, but at the same time, there's lots of other stories that are out there. Just saying, I heard a story yesterday about a woman named Paulie Murray, who was black, who was a lawyer, who graduated from Harvard, who uh, was Thurgood Marshall's assistant. But I've never heard that story before. I, now I want to read her biography. I want to find out more about her. She was a poet as well. So it's, it's a lot of, there's a lot of us that are out there that have done amazing things, and nobody knows that, that story has never been told. So that's, I think... Hopefully, what we as a community will start to do is supporting our artists so that we can get those stories out there. Right. And um, our outlet is Seriously Podcast, so we have a lot of upcoming actors and who are in web series. So, do you have any advice for any upcoming actors? The advice I give everyone uh, for actors is do theater. If you can do a part, if you can do a play for, let's say, three months, eight times a week, and you can keep that part fresh. Um, then you can do anything. A lot of us want to jump right to TV and run, jump right to film and what you don't realize is you'll begin to take on a lot of bad habits. But if you can do theater, you can do anything. Thank you so much. Congrats on the premiere. Thank this is amazing. Yeah. So um, tell us what made you, what inspired you to make this project? Well, I, after, Johnny and I did a film together called Stonewall and he was the lead in it, he's an amazing actor and after that, you wait for that year for the film to come out and I remember we were talking about our lives are going to change in one year and as we waited for that year to come I'm thinking I got to create something and Walker and I have been friends for the past 10 years and I decided let me write a short film for us to kind of work in together and it came out to something that it worked and basically we workshopped it and then I was able to get Anthony Sam Brand, who's a very talented actress to come on board and the cast came together the actors came together the the um, editor came together, the music came together. It was just a, it was a dream project that it became better and better after every single day that happened. And to have a premiere here in, in Urban World 
in front of a big audience and a hometown crowd has been nothing I can never really imagine. Wow, that's amazing. And what about the script or the project that you knew you wanted to be involved? Um, I, I was really interested. I'm pretty selective about my projects. Um, and I really liked, uh, in the black community, in the Latin community, communities of color, uh, queer relations, stuff like that. It's still very taboo, um, especially from a male standpoint as well. And I thought that this tackled it in a really interesting way because it wasn't really at the forefront in the beginning of the film. And you're kind of, as the story's unfolding, you're kind of getting to know different characters. And, and then I'm kind of just like a, a almost like kind of a cameo. And I, I loved that aspect of it. Toji gave me the call and was like, I want you to read my script. I want you to do my movie. And I was like, I didn't really hesitate. I kind of said yes before yeah, I even yeah, read yeah. it. <laughs> because we had such a great rapport yeah. working together on Stonewall. And so when he said he had this film going on, I just totally was about it and I said yes before I never do that no. but I knew it was in good hands so and then Jalik was in it and I actually got to meet Jasmine on the project as well so we it's really like a good group of people and I think we're just really ready to tell stories and I liked uh, I liked tackling something that was a little bit more taboo and we ended up getting a really great response from the audience which was really like humbling and nice okay thank you so much thank you Okay, hey, I'm Brittany with Seriously Podcast, and we are here with the very talented Algie Smith. How are you tonight? Good, how you doing? Good, good. So you're, we're here premiering the, the Hate You Give. Can you mm-hmm. tell us what kind of conversation you hope people receive from watching this film? Mm. I hope the conversation that's had from watching this film, honestly, is that we need to continue the conversation. This is a, it doesn't only target racial and social injustice, but it targets identity, you know what I'm saying? For people to step out of their own shoes and look at life through someone else's shoes, and also excuse me, not being afraid to speak up for what you believe in. That's one, that's one thing we see Star really go through, finding herself, whether she's called a snitch or whether they call it this or that, she stands on her own ten toes and she stands up for what she believes in. So hope the conversation, honestly, is just about justice in this nation and around the world, honestly, but also uh, finding your true identity. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, this is Mary from Seriously Podcast. We're here with George Tillman Jr. How you doing? Good. How you doing? Good, good. Good, glad good. To be here. I'm glad to be here as well. Okay, so my question is, as a director, right, you have 100 decisions in front of you. You have 100 people looking for those answers. How do you stay afloat doing, dealing with all that? I think the best way is always maintain what the vision is. The vision is when I read the book, The Hate You Give, I was just blown away about identification, who we are. Stand up for who you believe in and not be afraid. And that was my theme, was why, that's what attracted me. So when you out there every day, when it's like you don't got enough time to shoot, somebody want to get out of their makeup a little fast enough, you got like 300 extras waiting for you, you're running out of time. You remember why you're here, why it's important. You got to remember that and keep that, and that will keep you going each day. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, guys, so that's our time here at the 22nd Annual Urban World Film Festival. We had an amazing time. We got to chat with some celebrities. We got to chat with some web series creators and some actors. Yes, and if you don't know what Seriously Podcast is, we are a podcast dedicated to web series. And we like to interview actors and actresses and share questions, comments, and concerns. So if you want to learn more, you can go to seriouslypodcast.com. Make sure you subscribe to Seriously TV and tune in on iTunes and SoundCloud. Bye, guys.